And it's a welcome back to PKF Hospitality in conversation with. And today I've got um, my new colleague, my brand new colleague. Look how shiny he is. He's a really brand new <laughs> colleague. It's Florian van der Bellen. Florian joins us uh, um, at PKF Hospitality as the director and head of destination development. And he joins us from Dulcan, uh, which is in the Romanian delta of the Danube, I believe. Dulcan. Yes, Neil. Dulcia. Nice, Dulcia. There nice we go. to see you again. Yeah, Tulcea right. is in the extreme east of Romania, uh -huh. close to the uh, Ukrainian border. And uh, it's where the Danube Delta starts to divide into, like the Danube divides into three main arms, and together they become the Danube Delta. And uh, it's an amazing area, still widely unknown in Europe. Great. Well, that, that leads us straight into unknown areas, the developing of destination, development of destination. That is what you are in charge of. That's what you've taken over uh, at PKF Hospitality. What does it mean, uh, destination development? I can mean a lot of things. It depends on the destination, the so-called destination. Basically, what it means is um, uh, a... It could be like um, uh, a village or a, a, a tourism authority, or it could be a municipality, or it could be uh, a whole state uh, asking to improve their tourism structure, their tourism mm -hmm. income, their tourism professionality, uh, to attract more tourists, um, to think about what is necessary to attract more tourists and um, it's not only a numbers game it's uh, very often it's a quality game um, it's it's a lot of um, exchange necessary because each destination is is different uh, from the next one and um, so it's a very colorful area to work in right well i mean of course as we as, as we all know and i think that's uh, that that's that's out there in the public uh, in the public domain that tourism uh, in, in many uh, regions, in many uh, um, uh, states, uh, is playing a, uh, a big role to, uh, uh, to improve the visibility, to uh, improve the advancement of infrastructure, to uh, um, improve the uh, employment situation. Uh, I mean, uh, tourism has the potential to, uh, to mop up quite a bit of uh, um, uh, unemployed people, um, to uh, um, um, create jobs, uh, many of them uh, with, a, with a, a relatively low level of entry, uh, um, and, and, and to do that. And so I think that, that that's certainly an important role that's playing, uh, being played by tourism development. Um, certainly, uh, um, if I look at the continent that I live in, uh, um, um, Africa, there are a lot of uh, um, um, case studies that can be shown and many others that are developing. Now, mm -hmm. there is um, a, a bit of a theme in, in, in 2023 with us in PKF Hospitality around sustainability, around ESG, um, we've heard over the past few years uh, um, matters of over tourism, um, you know, whether it's Venice, whether it's Amsterdam, Barcelona, some other destinations where locals have started to push back and say, you know, what, it's great uh, to have tourists, but thank you very much. It's too much. Uh, and, and, and we don't want that. Um, and I know it's a vast field, but I want to start a bit of a discussion around the matter of sustainability of ESG. Uh, you know, ecological, um, um, social, and, 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 and governance. Um, how does one, if one were to look at from the beginning, I mean, we speak about, let's say, Dolce, uh, the, the, the uh, Danube Delta, um, and you say it's largely unknown. So that would possibly be a case study that one could look at and say, how does one develop this? And how does one make that a sustainable uh, um, um, uh, destination that in many decades to come, long after you and I will be gone, uh, um, uh, is, 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 uh, um, is sustainable, is, is, is delivering on all those promises that we're talking about. Uh, how does one manage that? And how does one, uh, um, uh, um, how would I put, um, mitigate the mass influx versus the more boutique one? Where, how does one find the happy medium? I know it's a vast yeah. field, so I'm sorry to, to just throw that at you as a, <laughs> a big ball, but you are carrying, you are carrying a, 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 a rugby jersey, so you know, how to catch a ball? So, uh, catch <laughs> <that>. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a it's a vast uh, area uh, to discuss. But um, when you look at uh, an area that 
at this stage is widely unknown. And let's let's take this example of the Danube Delta. Um, it is a natural paradise. Um, it has all the potential to attract a lot of people. Um, and it has certain disadvantages coming uh, with it by nature. Uh, for example, that a lot of places can only be reached by boat. Okay, that for once makes it more difficult, more expensive to develop anything, yeah? to mm -hmm. build something um, is tricky. Employment is another problem because uh, in these kind of remote areas, you don't really get uh, personnel, like trained personnel easily. So you have to think at that. Um, and at the same time, I think it's exactly these places where uh, these days there's a lot of craving for it. You know, it's uh, when we, another thing is like uh, authenticity. You know? Yeah, it's, it's another word like sustainability. It is highly abused, you know, uh, but when it comes back to the core of its meaning, it's our longing to experience the real stuff which for us is the real stuff, like to meet real people, you know, to interact on a human basis, to maybe find new friends because we meet them, I don't know, on the beach or in the mountains or anywhere, it doesn't matter. Nothing planned, nothing organized. Um, this feeling that there are still places left in the world uh, which are intact, where uh, the time is ticking a lot slower. Um, I think I think these these places have a lot of potential. But what is the danger? I'm not the only one who thinks that they have potential. So development, yes, is on its way. It's happening. It's very often happening uh, in an unstructured way. There's no strategy. There's no what we would understand as sustainability, you know, because the the necessary infrastructure is not there either. So uh, then it starts with issues like uh, what about transport? What about um, water and and electricity? What about um, uh, canalization? What about uh, all these issues, you know, what's happening with the rubbish? Is it being picked up and then dumped in the ocean or, you know, all of these issues. And uh, so I think that today there is a lot more uh, conscience about these things. And I think that um, more and more travelers not only would hope that these things are being looked at, but they are starting to expect it more and more. You know. Can I cut? Can I cut in there for a second? Um, do you have any stats or, or rough ideas of the percentages? Because for quite a while, people were saying that price, location, uh, price to get there uh, uh, is more important than the other softer uh, uh, um, um, aspects. Um, do you have some stats in mind, or plus minus, of, of how many people are basing their decision to travel somewhere? more on the uh, sustainability side? I remember some statistics, uh, I think they came from UNWTO, where uh, amongst uh, the younger or the youngest uh, generation of travelers now, uh, this is an important issue, certainly not the only one, but it is an issue that is combined with other one. So it is uh, sort of depending which kind of feeling they have about this type of sustainability um, and not alibi sustainability, but real one, uh, makes up about 38% of their decision-making. So it's huge. That's big. That's very big. Yeah. That's, it's bigger than, 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 uh, than I would have thought. And you mentioned the, uh, the alibi, i.e. the greenwashing that, uh, that we've seen uh, um, um, somewhere. Now, what, what's your view on who should 
regulate that? Should that be the market, i.e. should we wait for that 38% to become 55%, let's say, and then we say, oh, shucks, we better do something because otherwise we will not attract this market. Or is it something that, uh, um, that government will have to implement and will have to, because uh, at the end of the day, most of the development that you see is, is, is private sector based. Yes, the yep. infrastructure will have to be provided by the state, but uh, um, a hotel will be built by, in most places, will be built by a private investor uh, um, and, uh, um, and built on top of uh, municipal infrastructure if it's there. Um, so to do the things right and the right things, would that be market driven or would that be government legislated? Uh, the, the vast percentage would be market driven because it makes perfect sense. But it will need um, support from local or federal governments. You know, uh, some legislations uh, have to be introduced in order to, to make it the new standard. And in order to avoid um, more black sheep, if you like, um, and in order to protect uh, the potential that destinations have. Um, so I'm afraid it has to be both. Yeah. That's that's my opinion. Yeah, I would I would I would I would tend to agree because unfortunately there are still, as you say, people who are not uh, you know necessarily really believing in it and, and and rather say let's do something quick quick quick. And we've seen it recently in the in the horrible pictures that we've seen from uh, from the uh, Turkey and Syria. Uh, um, um, earthquakes where people were expected to build to a certain standard and yet they haven't. Um, so I think there needs to be a lot more control and, and, and that kind of thing put, uh, um, put in there. There are, interestingly enough, there are quite a few funds now that are only financing and supporting uh, projects that are really uh, um, 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 strong on ESG and they, uh, they are asking for credentials to be presented uh, in a very hard fashion, hard manner. To, uh, to make sure that uh, those are um, those are not just boxes that are ticked, but actually delivery is is happening on that before they finance uh, um, any of these of these projects. Um, and I know I uh, I bought some shares in uh, one of these. Funds. Oh, did you? Oh, good. And uh, yeah, I started two years ago, so nothing big. But uh, interesting enough, after a steady period of growth during the pandemic, uh, it went down again. Mm -hmm. So it seemed that people had other fears and more urgent uh, things to think of. Yeah. And um, but uh, yeah, I think in the long run there is just no no way past it. It's not even a long run. It's it's the sure. run of today of tomorrow, yeah. because we we have to do something. And awareness is is here now. Awareness yeah. is uh, growing every day. It's it's quite massive. So not to be reasonable and to, to do what makes perfect sense and what will be in higher demand than ever uh, would be foolish. That's Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I think that, it's, as you say, it's, it's, it's a movement which has uh, gathered such speed and such importance that, uh, you know, whoever will put in something now in the short term that is not going to meet the longer term goals uh, is waste, literally wasting his money or her money because uh, um, it'll, it'll, it'll be uh, um, uh, condemned in, in absolutely no time. Um, just quickly, because we're running out of time, talking about time, um, your, um, your outlook for next six months, you just joined us. Uh, um, what, 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 uh, um, what are you hoping to, uh, um, to, to achieve to bring to the team in terms of new projects and, and, and whatever your areas of concentration? I mean, we touched on the ESG side. Um, where do you see, apart from the uh, um, from the, uh, the 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 Danube Delta, where do you see uh, um, um, opportunities coming up? Uh, there are opportunities everywhere, really. Um, I've been here now not even one month, and I just returned from the uh, PKF roundtable in Tbilisi, which was highly interesting. And just from there, I think I will have two, maybe three projects coming up, uh, which are completely diverse. Um, we, uh, we have been asked to put in an offer for quite a famous Austrian resort destination, mm -hmm. which is suffering from being a mainly one season destination so far. Um, 
There's a lot happening in the Adriatic uh, post-Yugoslav countries uh, everywhere. At the same time, I want to meet as many colleagues in the PKF offices uh, in Romania, in Europe, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully in South Africa too. But it will have to wait a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so no, it's it's it has been a wonderful start, a great start. Uh, I see a lot of possibilities for synergies between uh, PKF's hotel. Uh, experience, hotel consulting, but um, also the, the hundreds, if not thousands, of accounting offices worldwide in the PKF family uh, who have excellent contacts. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very happy, very excited, and I see huge possibilities uh, to grow destination. So boredom, boredom is not an option for you, I'm sorry. <laughs> you will Definitely not, be bored. not. You will Definitely not. Be bored. not. And Florian, it's, I think it's so you, diverse. My I pleasure. Think you, I thank you very much for your time. It was only a few minutes, but uh, it was great to uh, to chat to you. I just wanted to also share with uh, the people who are watching the, um, this uh, this recording uh, that uh, we've got you uh, with us now, and that uh, you know, as you say, the the, the combination between hotels, resorts, <laughs> um, and, and 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 tourism development or, or destination development. Is very very much linked because you know a destination without accommodation is nothing. Uh, the accommodation without a destination that's been developed is nothing. So the synergies are very very obvious, and they are of course with us all under one roof. Thank you very much. All the very best. Looking forward to seeing you uh, in real life uh, really really soon. But uh, for now, thank you very much and be well. Thank you, Niels. All the best. Cheers. Bye bye. See you soon. Bye bye.